Oh, welcome. We've John done just nothing. So there's for this one tutorial, how to install everything. Voila, this is it. Nothing has been changed since then. So after the installation from the files from GitHub, this is what you get. There is already some additional stuff uh, that you don't get when you install open the box out of the box, so to speak. We have a right mouse click, that's normal, but it looks already with uh, Sardi Mono icons and with a lot of software. And not only that, but software that exists already. If you uh, pop up the menu, the standard menu of open box, it's actually some kind of template. So the software behind it is, does not exist, is not yet installed and so on. So they, you get these errors, so that's normal. What should you do? You should remake your menu and then everything is okay. So let's go over everything. We have uh, the plank already available and because of the copy paste we did from the GitHub. And on top here, you don't see it yet, but here it is. You have also an X fce4 panel that pops up and you can edit it as well if you're really good at pointing to the panel there it is panel preferences since it's now transparent it's a bit difficult to see where it begins and ends but i like it like this so there are a lot of things horizontal vertical and so on the lock the panel you can move it around or just put it here and then you can always hide it, intelligently hide, never hide it. I want it like this, the size may be a bit bigger, well, too big, something like that. And then the number of rows, the length, I just want a very small length. Don't want it like this, I want it like that. And appearance, I've chosen to go all alpha on the thing. So that's now transparent. And only the notification error and all the rest I've thrown away. So it's a standard XFC panel. When you start it, you ask you, do you want to default? And then you get rid of all the things you don't want. And this is what I kept. Okay, so that's the XFCE4 panel, just to see some indicators, so the sound, network, variety. Great. Next thing is maybe also getting my Dropbox in there, so we can have and a nice wallpaper to look at. This is a bit grayish, which goes fine with the Sarti icons, but it's still gray. Right mouse click, file manager, terminal, Firefox, accessoires, a lot of things, accessories, of course, accessoires, French, and then uh, the Dropbox. So let's see where do they put it, development, graphics, multimedia, network, Dropbox, okay. Fail to execute child process Dropbox, no such file. So here we get it. When the menu is not up to date, I have not installed Dropbox yet. Then you get these errors. Why? Because in the installation folder, there is of course an install. Let's make Nemo. Yes, yes, this is Nemo guys. It's not Tunar or anything else. Nautilus, but this, why is it so sometimes difficult to get this? All right, I have it. Let's change Nemo so it's more efficient. Just click here. And why is uh, that efficient? Well, when you click here on the terminal, then it opens a terminal inside this folder already. And I want just to install something. Install me um, Dropbox. There you go. And all these scripts, they do the same thing. They use Packer, go to the AUR, download the stuff, install it without asking me any of these questions. Do you want to edit it? Do you, are you sure you want to do it? So it's all automatically and we'll have a Dropbox in a bit. What else can we do in the meantime? Uh, for instance, uh, the GNOME terminal looks quite blue, ugly, I mean by that and preferences as well no menu bar thank you very much and a custom font would be better for you guys to see better for me to read and then we need to make it a bit bigger as well because of the fonts that get bigger 
let's change those scrolling and one scrolling limits no limits and then we're done we're still waiting for this one so next time i open up what am i opening up i've chosen for gnome terminal because i know there is a transparent gnome terminal which i'll install in a bit as well um in the meantime in the meantime what can we still do in the meantime while that's installing we quit we quit we quit i can't well there it is i can't install anything because yeah there's just one packet that can be busy so drawbacks has been installed that's something i've closed the gnome terminal Control alt t opening it again and um, there you go this is my new look it's still not transparent so while not make it transparent so install it's going to take as well some time first off it's going to remove the ground terminal done and now it's going to get the packer from AUR if something goes wrong there are other terminals available in the system so you're not left without a terminal but we do want the terminal to be transparent and now what can i explain in the meantime that the plank can be edited as well you can press on the right control sorry uh, left control of my keyboard and right mouse so left control key keyboard right mouse click and then you get the preferences and plank you can change a bit around it's still default it's still not the way i want it i can make it anything i like i have over 100 looks and one of them will probably please you as well just download it from github or use my scripts to download it a lot of things i've gathered around from the world i like this one for the sampan white okay I remember this one and then we can do an icon zoom when you go over it and then it goes up and down you can put it on the bottom the top the left anywhere you want and behavior as well you can change the behavior if you think oh, i don't like this behavior why why does he do that well change it see what happens i'm happy with intellihide and gnome terminal has been installed in the meantime that's how we fill up the gaps Control alt t we've seen that but i'm an uh, i3wm user we press windows enter aha yeah so all my i3wm uh, shortcuts have been also put in here i'm gonna take a transparent one you can choose your transparency the way you want like so that's something and let's not forget we installed Dropbox so let's go to Dropbox right mouse click right mouse click is broken why is right mouse click broken because I've chosen the file manager Nemo to work with and file manager Nemo works with a desktop so my wallpaper my 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 desktop here is actually Nemo what I see that makes it nice for me to work I can create a new folder do stuff and, and so on but the menu is now gone in open box so what I've created is a Windows or super key space and there is your menu that you normally would do would have with the right mouse click so we're going to look for Dropbox here it is now it's installed now we don't get an error but of course I should pop in my email and password so you don't mind that I do this in silence and without anybody watching okay everything has been and passwords and all that has been done Dropbox is installed login works and we're going to download everything at the, the download is just for the wallpapers and that's why we did it and um, um, let's go into where are the files of openbox actually so we have this arch openbox github 
uh, we've downloaded a lot of scripts inside but when you go to the home directory there are two folders you should remember should bookmark actually because of the essence because of how important they are you go to the dot config and you drag this one and you put it whatever you want not in trash of course here are possibility to put in the bookmarks as well and this one as well for open box you need this one and this one in the config file the hidden folder i mean let's go first into the open box why does it look this nice why because of the possibility to have shadows and transparency as well no? transparency comes with compton and why do we have compton why did it start because of the auto start so a lot of software has been installed and one of those is auto start so when we double click on this script it's gonna open with genie which i don't like I'm gonna say, my dear friend, you're gonna open it from now on. I don't want to see it anymore. I want to install this with Sublime Text. Better black, and now I can make it bigger for you. This was standards. We received these lines, and this is me figuring out what kind of composite manager I'm gonna take Compton or XComp manager. And I think. I'm going to leave it with this one, but maybe I find better settings here to make it nicer. But at comparing these two configs here, then I say, okay, Compton is a good choice. So this auto start will start the Compton file, which makes transparency possible. As you can see in the Control alt T, this is transparent. Thanks to Compton as well, it will be transparent. And then the plank is going to be here when we let's do it like this. Here's your plank. And let's go over the rest. You can see the shadow here. That's Compton. Oops. What else? XFCE panel is being started. It's up here. We have the pol kit, policy kit huh? uh, authentication agent. So you, if you change something and it should be root, then you get this pop up. Hey, give your password. This is me telling this machine to be Azerti. This might be a good thing to delete if you have a QWERTY. Um, and then applet is this little icon here, network manager applet. A mixer well sometimes the movie I put the headphone on my head and then I scream from that so loud so I've set it to be maximum 30% when I start the computer the number locks is on so number clock Firefox starts Spotify starts unclutter is to move the mouse away when you're watching a movie then the mouse should disappear from in some time after some time Things have been here installed and these things will just appear once if you have them, if you install them, if you run them, they will be there. And these are just interesting stuff I found that I don't need at the moment. I don't have a touchpad and so on, but interesting stuff that might be help other people. So this is the auto start. So this will be started every time you boot. Let's go over our little variety and this will be a bit nicer to work on environment i just found one thing that i could add that's this one so i'm actually telling him that the home.config open box is is the the home of open box <laughs> okay fine he knows that now and the menu and the rc xml is not the menu but in the rc xml i've I've invested some hours. Let's take a look with Sublime Text. Thank you very much. As you can see, it's a lot of code, long list of code. 
it's formatted in an XML, which is great, it's okay, whatever, but it's a lot of reading, it's a lot of analyzing, what does it do, why is it there, what can I change? So, for instance, let's do and control find variety. Voila. So variety, we know what it is. It's this uh, this wallpaper here, and what it says here, variety n means actually command take the next wallpaper, and I've bound the key to a n. So alt n is the next variety. Alt n is the next variety. Alt n is the next variety. Alt p is the previous variety. Alt p I want to keep this one. Looks great. But it is blank now. So all these programs are inside there. Should you read it? No. Do you read it? Yes, you will. <laughs> but there is a little program that can do just uh, that graphically. So that's quite interesting to know that it's like i3wm, very keyboard driven. So that's why I've put all my keyboard shortcuts of i3wm inside him here like Control alt w is Sublime Text for me and Alt-Alt-F is Firefox for me. So all these things just pop up and start and it's in my fingers, you know, it's, it's there. Like Windows Shift E is quitting the system in i3. So for me now in here, it's, it's powering down. So a whole computer stops working. Okay, so these things um, have been programmed by me. Print screen, I will take a picture it will be in pictures and stuff like that. You see? So it's plenty, plenty of, of uh, shortcuts and they are here. Um, I forgot to tell you, there's not only shortcuts there. When you go way down up there, you have a lot of text here. And I've, I added some of the things in, in here, but I guess it will not work. So you check it out in your system. I wanted Firefox on my two screen dual dual monitor. I wanted to have desktop one, maximize and focus Firefox on desktop one, monitor one. And on desktop one, which I only have one desktop, don't need it. Here we have two desktops. So if we scroll over it, you can see one, two, one, two, one, two. So I don't want it. I just want one desktop, but on the second monitor, I want to have Spotify. This is still an issue in the meaning that it will not maximize. It's, I remember in i3, we have the similar issue. It's going to read a class and the class is coming too late or some timing issue. So when he reads it, it's not already, it's not already there. The name of the class, something like that. If I remember correctly, anyway, it will maximize Firefox in on this desktop here. So that's an interesting thing if you want to um, have different programs pop up on different monitors. Interesting. Almost all shortcuts, shortcuts, a lot of shortcuts, shortcuts, still shortcuts, shortcuts, shortcuts. So as you can see, a lot of them. So do read them. The menu is also in XML, but you don't have to read those. You could change them, but don't do it. So I won't explain it. What should you do then for menus? Well, so we've explained the config open box, but there was another one, and it's the OB open box menu generator. If we go inside here, I've, I, I took the time to analyze this Perl code. And what does it say? And the most important things I've changed are, I don't want Genie, as my editor, I want Sublime 3 as my editor. That's something I've changed. And I've told that the terminal should be GNOME terminal, which is now the transparent GNOME terminal. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's it. And then the last one, the scheme, or the schema, well, it's going to get the thing we've just saw. It's going to read it, require this thing we just opened. And it's going to read the editor, which is now Sublime 3. And here we have done some major changes. So we have done here 
an uh, Nemo as file manager, the GNOME terminal as terminal, and Firefox as um, web browser, I think it was what it said. And the GD GM run, I've just, oh, I omitted it, I just put a hashtag in front of it, so it will not show up. All the rest I left the same. These were already omitted. Another one that I put away, I don't want tint, but I do want my config. So we have at uh, GitHub and Eric Dubois, we have also Aureola uh, Conkey. And now I have this little menu where I can instantly edit this specific file with my Sublime Tree editor, which is a variable. And I've already, I think I've I've omitted this one as well, so not this one, and I don't know if this one was already omitted or not. But anyway, just exit. That's all I want. So with this scheme that you edit, and with the Perl, the other file there, the, this file, with these two, the magic can happen. So it's it's one of it's interesting to put him some time to figure out these two. Because when I press right mouse click, but remember, if you already started Nemo, it will have this kind of folders because of the Nemo. What you do now is Windows spacebar, and this is the standard open box menu. And then we have this little program, advanced settings, the generator. This one is the scheme, this one is the config, the two that are up there. And then we can do generate a pipe menu. You can see the cache DB, so icons. But in this case, there are no icons. This is also quite nice. And since we have transparency, it's even nicer, thanks to Compton. So this is great too. It's all personal. Let's do another one. Ah, yeah. Um, you should read upon pipe menu. So what it does. Uh, if you pipe it, it's actually a kind of program and it says, okay, I'll make it on the fly. I'll make uh, create the menus on the fly. What's the advantage? Well, if you just installed a new program, then it's on the fly created. But what's the disadvantage? It has to create it on the fly. So it takes some processor time. It keeps, it, it, you feel that it takes some seconds to create it. So the next one is a static one. Static meaning you just run run it once and it will not be executed every time you open the menu. So it's quicker. It's I, I think I have a feeling that it's faster there, particularly particularly when you take the ones with images, icons. So you can do the same piping the menu with icons. So it's an actual program. When I click Windows spacebar, it's one two, three, four, there it is. That's what I mean, and with icons you feel it, that it's that the menu is being created, all the icons um, have been created, or um, the, the cache has been used as well as possible, as you can see, icons, db. So, if once it's created, let's try it again. Oh, not this one, this one, one, two, it's quicker. But it's going over all the programs. Are there new programs available? One, two. Okay, it's quicker once the icons have been created. If icons are wrong, it's possible too. It has been uh, the case uh, on my test uh, PC. You can have here a refresh icon set. But what I use and what I prefer and what I recommend to you is generate a static menu with icons, meaning you run it, it's there, and one, and there it is. One, and there it is. So it's, for me, the fastest way, and it has uh, the feeling that it's an, a brand new fast computer, rather than a slow program that's running. Okay, so this is my choice, personal choice, Windows, Spacebar, Advanced Settings, and that's done. We can use this one. But there are other programs. 
and um, these other programs are for instance here reconfigure open box open box auto start open box rc and open box menu but we've gone over them we've gone over them they are here open box they should mean something now if you go here open box and let's take the auto start you should recognize it so it's just a link to a file that's it basically this is the conky conf we've made as a personal link we've made open box rc all our shortcuts and open box menu which is automatically created i did not type one word in here that's the op menu generator that creates it and as you can see it's using icons from sardemono okay what else we are with uh, so we have menus we have windows spacebar one menu we have the blank second menu third menu i've imported the d menu from i3w windows d this is windows d and windows d firefox is like so and jim is like so so windows d provides a fallback menu if you like another menu another way to get there and uh, why uh, well while i was working on open box well you change some some things in the auto starts um, we have here and when things go wrong when when you cr make it crash actually yeah, when the code is wrong so it will not start the the menu the right mouse click menu was working in this one then i ah, yeah, no problem plank has not been loaded uh, the right mouse click is not working well no problem windows d and i have always my fallback menu available and let's be honest uh, it's also in my my left hand to do windows d to start applications in i3 so three menus available I have no conkey available yet. We were talking about conkeys. Let's take a look if we can have a conkey. And the conkeys are in a hidden folder. If you install that on the GitHub, then you have this hidden folder. And then you can run it just by clicking, not by clicking, not a good idea, by installing it via terminal, install conkey and read. The font is not currently installed. Yes, I want it. Password is needed. And now we have a conkey as well. So we're fine tuning our system. We should fine tune it. I see Linux Mint icon. Windows spacebar advanced conkey conf. Where is it? Here, there. You can find the file. And this is not Linux Mint, my dear friends. And this is open box. And it's that easy to just change, just type it rather than make a different difficult script to figure out where it is. Just type open box, done. And we're working on an open box version. So Windows spacebar, do whatever you want. Uh, right mouse click and you make your folders and open as root as well. This is what I mean with the policy. Uh, agent so now we are root and we can do stuff in etc in user and so on okay pop pop pom yeah themes and all that so the themes have been set of course you can change the themes so let's go over our windows and then spacebar and see what specific programs there are added for this system so compton has been added but we can't do anything here with it nitrogen has been added just change wallpapers you rather do it with that redshift is for your eyes at night so the screen is a bit softer 
the tweak tool. Can we do something with the tweak tool? Um, I don't think so. Really. Should delete this one. Maybe the startup applications, but let's keep it for the time being on our system. I don't think we can do anything with it. We need a specific program where I'm looking for now. But I want to be thorough, so I'm going to go each go over each one of them. I think it's this one. Customize look and feel. And it's going to be called Alex Appearance, but something more, I guess. Because it's an Alex Appearance for Openbox that I've installed. You can check it in the scripts what it's really called but this is the one I want so I want to change from our dark to something else uh, there are lots of possibilities as you can see I've downloaded a lot of themes as well and you just take a look what's available and apply that dark for instance that's quite dark and you can change it here the color you can change this color but not in this way you can change it in Arcolora we have uh, other icons let's take the darker version darker version mouse cursor is already set as pre-snow window border so the the theme and the window border are split so you should think about it if you change your theme here change it here as well okay I've, I've installed a special kind of arc dark theme for uh, open box that's why you have it font is full and other okay apply so when we go to here we'll get a new kind of icon theme once we log on and log off we can show you that as well windows spacebar exit exit and then log back on and we'll have something different the con key is there that's nice don't want Spotify not yet that's nice that you are here and the wallpaper has changed which is great and we wanted to see if the icons were changed so now we're working on something dark with red the vampire icons okay what's more we have started new mix already so sorry but it will not work again windows spacebar and then it will work so we wait here file manager blah 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 preferred applications might be interesting to take a look at mm -hmm. i am looking for something specific Yes, I am. So we take Windows D, Qt4, config, this one, Qt config, Qt4, and we should change this one as well to GTK+. If you save it, you'll see why. Uh, it's the same theme as Arc, which is what I want. The fonts, we can change this as well. Sans serif is not my thing. I am not a sans guy with regular with 12 size which is quite large I know and the same here not all sans you can type it as well and here you can type it also and then you have to scroll a bit so everything is not all don't come with anything else okay safe and all that has never been changed by me but GTK plus was the most important. Don't forget to save here, exit, done. Sublime text and programs like that will have a nice look and other programs that will use it, will know that it has to use the arc theme. Figuring out what next, I would do a Windows D to show you the OB things. So we have OB auto start, OB conf, object copy is not something with OB, OB key. I want to show you this one. 
I told you in the beginning that we had an, uh, all these keys in this file, in an XML file. Well, here they are as well, but visually. So I've made a lot of screen, uh, sorry, sort of shortcuts, keyboard shortcuts. Come on, it's a bit tricky to select them from time to time. Gonna see if I find something to make it a little bit more easy to select. Anyway, let's take, uh, for instance, I don't know, control print. Give me a GNOME screenshot interactive. Control print screen gives me control print screen gives me interactive. You want that? You want this? You want that? I want this. Okay, let's take a picture and then we have a nice picture. We can save it and be done with it. Super F3 was going to do Super Windows F3 is going to run Inkscape. Okay, done. And so it's plenty with with stuff as you can see GIMP and, and F4, F10 is Spotify, F6 is VLC and so on and so on and so on and so on. Maybe we could add one. Uh, that's maybe a good idea to see just once how to do it. You press here the plus and then you have to scroll. Here it is. Don't leave it A because when you type terminal every A will become a shortcut. So that's not a good idea. I've done that. Okay, what should you do? You should press on this thing here. And give me a new accelerator. I don't know, um, just doing, just faking it. Control Alt U, I don't think I have that one. And then let's uh, install Firefox again. It doesn't matter. It's good that uh, it didn't do what it should do. What it should do is type C minus A minus U. But it didn't do that. So you have to help him. So C is uh, Control A, Alt and the U. Okay, I've helped him. Now we have to assign an action to this key here. So you need both of them, this one and this one. And then plus. This is quite amazing. A lot of options, but when you delve into the, the engine of this uh, system, then you find yourself, I want this and I want that, and it's not there. So sometimes you start off and say wow what's all this and then at the end you say mm, i'm missing stuff <laughs> but anyway executing is here you want to execute something and then you want to execute a program and doesn't mind i do have a program that i don't have yet gpic i don't have gpic yet well okay should do that by the way okay so we have to save it, it's up here. Where is it going to save? In this rc.xml file that we discussed. Control, Alt, U. And here is GPIC. It's that easy and it's that fun, much fun to have everything available under a keyboard shortcut. And the fun in that is as well, Moving a lot, moving these shortcuts from Linux Min to Antergos to Arch to everywhere you go to Ubuntu, that's also uh, another challenge. So that's shortcuts. Let's leave it in. It's nice. Windows D, OB, everything that starts with an OB. The OB menu, I have not used it. It's a manual way of doing everything. Uh, new menu, new item. I don't want to spend hours and hours on that. I just want to have the same flexibility with advanced settings, OB menu, choose one of the four, done. So by Windows D, it's one of the programs that I would uh, put on my list to not install again. And then the OBX prop is something you should might wanna know, but there is also Xprop, which does the same thing. What does it do? It gives us this little sign here, and when you press something, uh, I hope, no, that will not work. But when you press something, then um, it will show you some text. But it's much easier to do this in the terminal. And then obxprop, 
and when you hover over something it gives you all this output and actually we see that the name of the thing we clicked on is actually Nemo and then we can decide for instance that Nemo should always be maximized or that Nemo should always go to screen number two and stuff like that so upon the name we do an action of, on basis of this class for instance these are possibilities but maybe a bit too far so that's um, open box exiting <laughs> should be quite interesting as well so Windows Shift E is one of the shortcuts to exit the system that's really powering down done finished log off is something else that's Windows and then spacebar exit which is going to exit open box back to GDM um, didn't program anything to go to sleep or hibernate or all that stuff don't use it mm screen is going to sleep after some time didn't set anything don't want it to be to, to, to come back in the GDM I don't want that don't want to be able to log in again I want just to wake it up with my mouse or keyboard and it's there so that's not set maybe you should see also the CPU usage very low very low indeed yeah. Let's take a look at uh, the uses of uh, the memory. So memory 50%, but it's 50% of 3 comma and so on. So we have 1.96 now used. Let's kill Spotify, close. Let's kill Firefox, close. And Sublime Text, close. So 1.48 is still used but i must say that it's 1.1 when you install when you run and you boot up it's 1.1 so it's not uh, probably not so honest to compare now but anyway it's not so much in consumption and cpu is very very low so for uh, older computers it might be interesting as well well i hope i mentioned everything um ob menu all the obbies OB auto start, OB configuration. Um, this is also something that you might want to take a look at. The OB conf, so the open box configuration manager can be used as well to change some of the things. I've, I, I thought I started with this one and then went back to the LX appearance uh, open box variance, variant. So you can change the same things here. I don't know if there are more. Uh, here you can decide how many desktops. So I want just one. And then that's, that's that. And then uh, the margins eventually a dock or something like that. Okay. So that's the last thing I wanted to mention. I do think I have mentioned everything now about um, Openbox so you can work efficiently with it. So do check out the shortcuts. That's, I think quite necessary to figure out what does what on your system and uh, enjoy open box I would say